Want to hear your favorite Sir shows in CD quality and ad-free? Then sign up for Smodcast, a premium content archive launching in July. Membership has its perks, including access to ticketed events before anybody else. And if you pre-order Smodcast now, you'll get a kick-ass merchandise bundle, including comics, a mini poster, stickers, a mystery shirt, and more. The first 150 pre-orders will also receive either a clerk's lunchbox or a chronic action figure. The merchandise bundle is just 25 bucks plus shipping and handling and includes your first month of Smodcast access. After that, your credit card will be billed just $4.99 a month for ad-free, high-quality versions of every Smodcast internet radio show. Smodcast, where Smodcast goes say for pay. Sign up at Smodcast.com. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Hello, my friends. This is tremendous. Good day to you or good night, whichever part of the earth you're in. However, the moon and the sun is rising and setting, whatever. This is, uh, of course, Jay Moore. This is my podcast. More stories. First one went so well, we decided to do it again. I guess. Uh, Email us, Twitter, hashtag more stories. All I ask is you put your name on it. Put your name on it. Tom Segura joins me at the Fake Mustache Studios. Hey, how's it going? Great comedian. One of the guys that truly makes me laugh. And that's only a handful if you're a comic. Charlie Grenzer is here, the founder and the proprietor, of course, of the Asheville Comedy Festival. Laugh your Asheville off. Hi, Bubby. Co-founder. Well, you know, well, let's just hope the other guy doesn't listen to the podcast and just give you all the glory. <laughs> Pretty sure he will. Uh, we were just talking to the mic. If you're going to talk, grab the mic. What? Oh. Uh, oh. Well, despite my guest's best efforts to sidetrack this uh, podcast immediately, <laughs> I'll hand the mic back, dummy. <laughs> we were just talking before we came on uh, about fat people and how really nothing makes us happier than a fat person in a pool on vacation or in the ocean that wears a T-shirt. It's the best. <laughs> It's the best. The Mexican uh, children, there's always like a f- – s- not always. I don't want to speak in superlatives because I don't want you guys fucking making me apologize like every other asshole comic has to go apologize. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see a Mexican family at the beach and every once in a while, always, there's like <laughs> one 15-year-old 400-pound boy yeah. who's just done nothing but eat fucking tortillas his entire life. Yep. And he's out there in that T-shirt and like jean shorts. <laughs> And he's super embarrassed, like, don't look at me, I'm chai. <laughs> and then when he gets out, you just see those beautiful, dark, like, Mexican areolas. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're like, nice. Like, they're beautiful. And he's got, like, yeah. a nice fucking, like, B, <laughs> yeah. small C, big B. Like, yeah. And you're like, look at the fucking tits. She, uh, never mind. And you see, it's a, it's a guy. It's a guy. And he's all, uh, t- Tom Zagora has a podcast called Your Mom's House. It's extraordinary. He does it with his wife, Christina. He married up like me. We all, every guy in this room married up. Very true. Except yeah. for engineer Matty Cohen, who is just out there like a lone wolf, <laughs> crawling the fucking streets, Johnny Hammersticks, crushing ass. Crushing ass. He doesn't give a shit. He's out at the farmer's market like, you like them bananas, honey? <laughs> <laughs> he just said, put, put my, my fucking, fucking, fucking name, name on right. it. Atta boy, Matty. So I want to really quickly, uh, and Charlie Grenzer is here, uh, Laugh Your Asheville Off is the uh, comedy festival that he co-founded and continues to run very well. It's a very well-run machine out there, the people of Asheville, North Carolina. If you're in like a 200-mile radius, you should go check that out, just for the countryside alone, to be a, what a fucking jerk. I, just for the countryside alone, guys. What is this, fucking NPR? Go on the Blue Ridge Parkway, play some golf. Uh, Blue Ridge Parkway, it's beautiful, the leaves are changing colors. 
I wanted to uh, just quickly backtrack and say to anybody that listened to Barry Katz, uh, I probably – I broke his balls pretty hard and I didn't yep. want <laughs> – it's nice. Uh, by the way, Tom Zagora and Charlie Gwenser are sharing one mic and they can't figure out that when it, you speak, you pull the mic out of the other guy's hand. <laughs> I can't wait for you two assholes to bump heads. Like Jeez. this? Yeah. Uh, and I broke – Barry's balls hard last week. I said, Barry Katz is here. He's my manager and he has the distinction of being fired by everyone ever. I'm the last, I'm the sole survivor. Oh and like later in the podcast, he goes, uh, so I was talking, I was telling a story about when I got sa- Saturday Night Live mm-hmm. and I said, Anthony Clark. And he goes, also still a client. <laughs> 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 so I want to say to people that listen to the first one, the nature of being a manager, it's, it's very cyclical. You do people run through you. And the problem with being a manager is the more successful you get, the less any of your clients need you. Case in point, you look at a guy like, and I'm just, I don't make fun of comics and I'm not using this to be funny, but a guy like Caratop, who's a comic, before he landed in Vegas, you know, he had a manager and he broke that manager's balls regularly, like fucking get me gigs, get me gigs, get me gigs. And then that manager finally sits down with like the Luxor or wherever he is and gets him like a $100 million deal. Caratop's not leaving Vegas anytime soon that fucking shark reef will close before carrot top leaves yeah so he doesn't what the fuck does he need a manager for so do you keep paying your manager or in perpetuity and just well, have him around i gotta ask you this if you if you had like a a gig like that where you've been with your manager a long time gary unmarried right so i didn't need a manager when i was doing gary but you unmarried. pay him just because he's helped you so much is that why you do it well yeah he helps in the negotiation and ideally when you have a manager you want him to become you want to become so successful that you don't really need them until you take it to the next level of success where you have your own show where you can tell them the network. You can tell the network my manager is also an executive producer. That way whenever you have a complaint, it's you and let's say the director and your manager. It's a three-pronged person attack instead of just the talent complaining. Gotcha. You now have like this extra voice who can go to the network and say these are all my problems right. and then you come in and play the good guy. You know what I mean? Like you have your manager go in and go, hey, man, this is unbelievable. The craft service budget. I don't know why we need deviled eggs at lunchtime. Yeah. And then you come in and go, look, I don't, I don't know what his fucking problem is with the deviled eggs, but uh, if it just makes him happy. So really the entire manager job is to A, get your client work. B, fall on the sword a billion times a year. Like you missed your fucking appointment. All right, I'll handle it, man. Yeah. I fucked up. I told the kid. You know, it's all. And then – the byproduct of that is people think your manager's an asshole. Right. But really, you're the asshole. Right. The puppet master. Yeah. Dude. Control. And sh- that's our drinking game we play on uh, More Stories. Every time we imitate an uh, African-American, mm-hmm. everyone takes a shot. Oh, speaking of, I feel like when, we, when you talked about, we were talking about the beach, all the mm-hmm. Mexicans at the beach, it's kind of like we're jumping all on them. Blacks are crazy at the beach too. Like if you're in this is Tom South- Segura <laughs> podcast is your mom's house, <laughs> and he's at Tom Segura on Twitter. I like in I, I haven't seen it here, but like in South Florida, like you're down in Miami, there'll be like uh, a family of black people, and there'll be like a boy who's like, I gotta go pee, and they'll be like, go in the ocean. He'll be like, nah, I don't like the ocean. They're like, but you gotta pee, and, he's, and he'll just stand there and they'll try to coach him into going in the ocean. They'd be like, I don't want to go in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. You've seen this argument? I swear to God. I've seen, he's seen he's it before, seen too. it with his own eyes. Charlie and Tommy are both Florida boys. Yeah. you, Tommy, Tommy was at my wedding a couple years Charlie ago. Charlie actually has a 64-inch waist. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. It's getting close. Uh, Tom, when Tom was at the, Do you remember at the wedding, we got married on the beach in Hollywood Beach. You remember Les and Martha, like that area down there? Yeah. Why and, so you realize we're doing a podcast and people listening have no fucking idea what matter. you're They don't know half about. of what we're talking Jesus, about. Yes, they do. If you go, my wife's parents' name. South Les, Florida. Hollywood Beach, Florida. Anyways. Charlie's wife's name. We're getting married. Pa- Charlie's wife's parents' names are Les and Martha. They're at your wedding. Go ahead. So okay. That's all. It was at their place on the beach. You remember when, yeah. the, when the refugee boat like the day of my wedding, rolled up on the beach that I was getting married on. Yes. I you remember that? How do you know those people just didn't really want to be at your wedding? Uh, well, they weren't dressed appropriately, that's for sure. Yeah. Remember there was helicopters? You wore fucking flip-flops to your wedding. What the fuck are <laughs> hey, you talking about? But I had you linen on. Stoned asshole. Oh, you wore fucking flip-flops stoned. to your own wedding. Yeah, I did. Actually, on- I, t- I took them off when I got married. 
Oh, that's gangster. Yeah. It was or lazy. I'm not sure. Yeah, what? You didn't want both. sand in your oh, fucking... You know what I remember? I Take said, the mic when you talk. I, well, what I said oh at, the, at the... Oh, my God. Now I see the downfalls it. of podcasting. Let uh, him hold it most of the time. There needs to be a third mic. I that's know. all it is. Uh, that when when uh, I, I spoke at, the, <laughs> at their wedding, and when Laurel walked up, at his Charlie's. wife, at Charlie's wedding, okay, I meant to... to I, I was speaking, and I his wife walked up, and I meant to say, look at you. You just... <laughs> You took my breath away, and I said, I'm out of breath. <laughs> and it sounded so dumb. I was like, I'm out of breath. <laughs> they were like, cool. And I was like, not because I'm tired, because you look beautiful. <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> He's going to spit. I had a mouthful of water. That's so, so stupid. So Charlie's beautiful wife Laurel took yeah took, started, took my breath away. Why? If you're the best man giving a speech, why is she up walking around? She should have showed you a little respect, kept the seat, and, and enjoyed the toast. It was it was different than that. It was, uh, was she coming to take the mic from you? We no, it was they had the format was different. It wasn't like a regular. She was telling setup. you, uh, Tommy, this wedding we don't have we don't wear shoes. They, <laughs> <laughs> Please, if you could just get rid of those Adidas. They had like a uh I don't like the ocean. They had like a I don't wanna go in the I don't wanna go in the water. You can charge that to the game right now. <laughs> they had like me I spoke first. Right. I spoke before the ceremony started. Yeah. I introduced people. And so she was just walking towards you and you meant to say, You're so beautiful, you take my breath away. Yes. But you freaked out? Like were you I get I no, I just was I think you it was just, just like Yeah, just in front of the people I was like, Look at you. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> It was so dumb. And did she go, what? Uh, they, I just kept, I was like, um, uh, because of your I, booty, I just, I'm out of breath. <laughs> because of your booty. Your booty. You know, I'm, <laughs> because of your booty. Jesus. Because you still booty. can't get it right. I still can't get it right. Because of your booty. Beauty, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Don't say I'm out of breath because I'm wearing Ugg boots on the beach. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm hauling sand. I'm hauling sneakers around. No wonder everybody's in flip flops. Sneakers are a motherfucker out here. <laughs> so, uh, Tommy was talking about Tom Segura. Uh, who has his podcast of your mom's house. This is more stories. Hashtag more stories if you want to hear particular stories. Twitter. On Twitter. Up on Twitter. Yo, hit me on Twitter, son. Horace Grant. Horace Grant, call me. <laughs> How do you feel about Tracy Morgan having to apologize for saying what he said about the gays? And then he has to do another I've apology had... for saying what he said about people with Down syndrome. I, I've This is going on a long time. <laughs> and the one argument that I've heard that... Where people are like, well, you know, especially when you're well known, you have like s- there's some responsibility that you have on stage. I'm of the opinion that you don't have a responsibility on stage. I don't think that you have a responsibility to to anybody. I think your responsibility is to try to get laughs. Yeah, make the attempt to and get laughs. The comedy club, I say all the time. I, you and I have talked about it. The comedy club is like the last bubble of First Amendment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, look, and if you got people running to Facebook from the comedy club. I mean, we're not talking about Michael Richards screaming nigger into the balcony. Right. At, at two actual black men, like right. a fucking crazy man. Right. We're talking about Tracy, like, and Tracy's like from a fucking other planet. Like, he's not well. Yeah. Like, if you said, Tracy, this is my friend Charlie, he's from space, he'd be like, oh, what's up, Charlie? How long you been here? Like, he wouldn't even go, like, space? What the fuck, space? Yeah, That's yeah. two shots. That's second. So, uh, Tommy had a couple of good black guy impressions earlier. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but, we're on a third bottle, but- Really quick, please drop uh, for me and our listeners on More Stories, the podcast, the 15-year-old that refuses to go in the ocean to pee. Real quick. I don't want to go in the ocean. <laughs> you got to go. I'll be the. I'll be like just a white-sounding parent. But you have to go. If you have to pee, you have to go in the ocean. Nah, the stingray. <laughs> Man, I ain't getting in the water. Uh, French Canadians... And Germans and anything Nordic, they love the Speedo. Yeah. And they don't give a fuck. Actually, all of Eastern Europe. All of Eastern Europe, too. They roll with the Speedo. Roll with the Speedo. But they roll with it with such confidence. They really are. If you you drew like a a, a scale, the fat fucking guy with the t-shirt in the pool is on one end. And then you got like... Like the super rail thin, bizarre German guy with no like pasty white in his speedo yeah. is on the other end of the scale, and we're all just really in the middle, flotsam and jetsam between those two extremes on the beach. And do you realize too that like we wear, you know, we wear shorts, swim trunks, or board shorts? They think like Eastern Europe, especially, 
with the speedos think you look like a fucking clown. Yeah, you know why? Shorts. Like because like, they don't what? have fucking beaches where they live. Because they're <laughs> landlocked assholes. <laughs> and that's the message I want you to take from today's podcast. Everyone from Eastern Europe are landlocked assholes. There you go.